Hey everybody, it's Joel Howe, and this is going to be a tutorial on uh, an introduction to Mass Effects and the new physics solver for 3ds Max. Uh, I've got 3ds Max 2013 here, and uh, we've got a uh, billiards table. And uh, what we'll do is just try to shoot a pool shot here using uh, Mass Effects. Uh, now we could probably do this a lot easier with a keyframe animation. But uh, I thought uh, it would be a fun experiment to try and to set, show how to set up a scene. So the first things first, uh, the pool table geometry is really complex. So what I would do is typically try to change the, uh, make simplified versions of this to include in the physics, physics solver. And uh, so we have to create some geometry first. I'm going to uh, turn on auto grid and just draw some boxes here and put those, try to align those over on the bumpers of the pool table and uh, we'll only be working in this on this side let's just and so I'm just holding shift and moving a copy and again holding shift and making a copy and uh, we will rotate that let me turn on snapping first <coughs> So this will create our bumpers uh, in a much simpler representation. And we can just line those up there. So we've got our bumpers and uh, we can move those or size these to kind of fit where the pockets are. And so that would be enough for us to, to, uh, to show that. I'm also going to uh, draw a... Um, uh, another box for the for the actual felt and uh, I'll do that same exact way here <clears throat> and I'll just set the height to one inch so that's uh, one inch slate I guess you would say and then um, uh, just to line up with the table you could use the line tool but since the Z is at 30.155 I can change that to 29 and it's pretty much going to be lined up with the uh, uh, with the pool table. So at this point, we have um, a basic setup here, and uh, I could actually hide this, and we could just work within uh, work with just these simple objects and uh, animate the um, the billiard balls, and then bring the table back for the rendering of that animation. So. Uh, We'll call. Uh, so the last thing I need is, in terms of geometry, is just a cylinder to represent the the Q the the Q the stick, and uh, uh, we'll do that here. And uh, I'm going to just rotate this down, and we'll bring it over and just size it so it looks right. Okay. Now this won't be the actual geometry we use, but uh, okay. So let's line up a shot here, or get our balls in place, and um, uh, let's create an animation uh, to uh, to just show. So we use the actual uh, geometry here to drive the physics the physics simulation, and I'm going to animate this and we'll just kind of line it up here probably should set set this to the local axis so that I can rotate it down and uh, set the position to the local axis as well and so now we've got a good starting point and uh, I'll turn on auto key and we'll just animate and uh, um, basically animate through the through the queue a little bit and uh, maybe we'll pull this back a little bit so we get a little more a little more action there and if I play that through that's a pretty slow shot so uh, we could bring this back even more and uh, actually we can just clone this keyframe back and uh, so we've got a full full animation there. 
um, and we can play with the keyframes there for timing. Okay, so now we've got our geometry set up, and now we have to go in and basically uh, um, <coughs> define all the properties for the physics simulation. So uh, in this case, I'm going to choose the non-moving objects, basically the bumpers and the felt or the slate of the pool table here. And I'll go to animation, <coughs> simulation mass effects, rigid bodies, and I'm going to set these as a static rigid body. Basically, they're not going to move, and they're going to um, they're going to be part of the dynamics and collision calculations, but they're not moving themselves. So that's uh, 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 in other simulations that'd be considered grounded or or immovable objects. And uh, so you can see that the mass effects rigid body modifier gets applied to each object, and uh, um, by def and the setting here, this r body type is static, and uh, we have defaults for density. Uh, I'm going to keep everything here the same. Uh, the shape type is defined as a box because these are all box objects, so that that works well, and. Um, so we're all set there. I'm just going to keep the defaults for right now. Uh, the next is the three balls. And we'll go to animation, simulation, rigid bodies, and I'm going to choose dynamic as the rigid body here. And dynamic means that w for each of these objects, we're going to, uh, the object will be able to move and collide with other objects, and uh, so so we'll get plenty of uh, <clears throat> plenty of good um, uh, action on the, on on the balls here. The one thing I'm going to change right away is that they've got a convex shape type, and because these are are actually spheres, uh, the ball would actually benefit from the sphere shape type. Uh, so we'll we'll apply that, and I'll do that for each of the objects, each of the balls, because the convex shape is a is a convex hull. It's a simplified convex hull, uh, and the sphere works a lot better if you've got uh, spherical objects. But you can look at the different uh, shape types uh, to optimize or improve the accuracy of your simulation. Okay, so now we have the again the pool table is static objects the balls are dynamic objects and now we've got the queue here which is uh, uh, should give that a a name and um, I'm gonna apply just the modify here because it's just one object so I can choose mass, mass effects rigid body modifier and in this case uh, we could choose the convex shape you can take a look at uh, what happens here? You can you can actually see the um, you can actually see the shape being generated. It's uh, it's it's not ideal. Um, I'm going to because we're only really worried about the the very tip of this. I'm going to actually use a box, and you can see that that actually changes the um, um, and simplifies the object a lot a fair amount. So we've got uh, a box there. And uh, I think that should work pretty well. So that's pretty much the uh, the basics of the setup. And at this point, you want to go to your tool uh, toolbar. Make sure that the Mass Effects toolbar is is visible. You can tear it off or or add it. And uh, one thing I'll do is we'll go into the main um, uh, tools Mass Effects tools window here, and you you can see your uh, a few things to look for. Um, one is that uh, uh, you can turn on ground collisions. You can actually specify a height in the world that is the lowest point that an object can go, and um, so that's uh, uh, that's certainly a um, a good thing if you have a kind of a ground plane that you want everything to stop at. Um, and there's a, a few other settings, but for right now, one thing that you'll see is that really is a sensitive issue is the number of uh, iterations and substeps in the solver. So because we have everything defined, uh, and let me just make sure I did this, uh, for the pool queue, 
I know we gave it a box shape type, but it was set to dynamic by default. I want to change that to kinematic because that's going to, the kinematic rigid body type is basically pre animated. So it's going to maintain, it'll actually continue to maintain those keyframes uh, and it won't react. Uh, it won't react with uh, uh, a collision with another object. It's going to actually maintain this uh, maintain this um, animation. So that's definitely one one thing that you need to do. So that, so we've got all three body uh, rigid body types, and at this point I can can uh, uh, I'm just going to uh, uh, run the simulation, and we'll see what we get. Okay. So you can see we got a lot of hopping around. We've got some. Uh, we've got a, a a fair amount of issues here. So let's do a few things. We'll stop that. First of all, I'm going to set the solver to 50 and 10. We'll just see what happens if we increase the solver uh, settings. Okay. So the the increase in the solver really helps to. Um, really helps to uh, smooth out the, the animation. Now there's an issue where we have uh, the, the bumpers are not we're not getting good action off the bumpers here. So if I try to line the pool shot up and um, uh, let's see, so I'll move the 8-ball over a little bit so that we'll actually get a little better connection there and uh, we'll view the uh, simulation here we'll run it again <clears throat> and you can see that um, one nice thing is that the simulation continues to run even though you're past, we're only at 100 frames. Um, the bumpers here, kind of, the ball will die right on the bumper. And um, actually that bounced pretty good. The um, one thing that you can look at if you're not getting the bounce effects that you want is in the uh, advanced settings. Um, you have a automatic and a manual, and you can bas basically specify a minimum speed at which things don't bounce anymore. So the automatic is working well here, but uh, I've had situations in the past where uh, things just didn't bounce, and it was it was um, because of the uh, uh, the automatic settings weren't working. Okay, so let's move this out of the way, and I don't need to play with the uh, with the Q animation here. Let's just try to line up the shot so that uh, we can make the um, make the shot here. So I'm going to line that up. I'm going to look at that and we'll see if that one goes. And maybe we'll look at a top view this time. And we'll run the simulation again. And we get uh, <clears throat> what looks to be a Hey, all right, and there it goes. And actually, you can see where it landed. The ball landed at zero for the uh, the world um, our ground collisions. Okay, so at that point, I'm okay with this animation, and uh, I'm ready to bake it out. So I need to basically convert this to uh, keyframes. And so I'll select these three objects. Actually, I don't even need to select the uh, Q because it's, um, it's, it's not important. And uh, I'll go to Simulation Tools, and you can see options for baking. This is going to basically just create keyframes based on the simulation. But one thing I'll do before that is I'm going to just increase the, we'll see, the simulation ran pretty well that time. Um, but I'm going to boost the, uh, the number of iterations and sub-steps, which is the number of times per second uh, the calculations are made. And just see if that helps so that now if I go to my simulation and I choose bake selected, I've got the two balls selected here. And we'll get, uh, we'll run the simulation and you'll see that's all we have for 100 frames. So maybe I'll go out to 200, uh, 300 frames and uh, we'll run that again. And uh, so I have to actually go back and unbake those. That gets rid of the keyframes that were made. And then I'll uh, bake select it again. 
simulation gets run and uh, we get the end result there. So now we've got that captured in the uh, animation there and um, so at this point I can go back I can unhide all oops there's the rest of the uh, the rest of the uh, balls that we don't need and I'll just hide those pieces and you can see the um, the end result now and so this was just a basic uh, uh, basic just kind of accepting the defaults for the mass effect simulation and uh, that that does it definitely a little work to do definitely some fine-tuning but uh, hopefully this was a good tutorial to kind of introduce you to how Mass Effects works and using it in three in uh, in 3ds Max 2013.